über die Bildhauerei aus meiner sensitivistischen Sichtweise. Sensitivistic approach to sculpture. A work of art is an entity that coexists with the reality in which is a result of an interaction between the work itself and the observer. In the case of paintings, the work of art creates a virtual space for the onlooker who, thanks to the attention given, can enter and examine it as if it were a real space. My sensitivistic approach to viewing paintings begins with the systematic study of lines. In that way I can simultaneously feel the character of the lines and tour the entire virtual space of the painting. Then I examine planes and forms, a procedure that allowed me to define the atmosphere and character of the examined space. After that, I concentrate on the time that exists in the virtual space of the painting. By synthesizing the feelings of time and space, I become aware of the space-time, which is in fact the essence of any artwork. In the case of sculpture assessment, the sensitivistic approach is different. When I view a sculpture, two separate streams of thoughts and feelings run through me. Typically, the second stream follows the first, but it also happens that the two streams run simultaneously or alternately. Primary stream of thoughts and feelings. By manipulating the mass and form of a sculpture, by orienting its shapes and by sequencing its formative patterns, the sculptor suggests intention to an activity, to open up, to flow, to become dissolved, to expand, to hover, to explode, to oscillate, etc. A patient observer may recognize the detected intention, feel it, and accept it. As I walk around a sculpture, I focus my attention on the rays of light reflected off its surface. By following these rays, as well as the contours of the sculpture, I get an impression of its full volume. After that I study the mass of the sculpture and I try to determine the orientation of its shapes and to anticipate their suggested, intended moves. At the same time I try to identify the feelings elicited in me by the material of the sculpture, its texture, its impact when viewed from a distance and when scrutinized closely. The complexity of this procedure increases in the case of figurative sculptures and sculptures that are also functional objects. Having gradually identified and defined the physical characteristics and structure of the sculpture, I concentrate my attention on its mental space, or more precisely, on the impression that this space conveys about its size, shape and character. The size and shape of the mental space of a sculpture is different from its actual physical size. The mental space of a sculpture can be tentatively called the aura. If we make a group of two or more sculptures, the mental spaces of the sculptures are summed up in a unique mental space as the group arises. After I clearly visualize the mental space, I concentrate on the feeling of time in that space. I use a stair technique to experience time within the mental space. I find an observation point from which the best orientation of shapes is best seen and the size of the sculpture's mental space is best felt. I stand hard until I can see a double image of the sculpture. I keep staring as I wait to sense time. If I fail, I try another technique. I turn away so that the sculpture is my right. Barely in my peripheral view, as I turn my head left and right, the sculpture disappears from my sight, appears again, then disappears and reappears again. After that I turn away from the sculpture so I cannot see it, imagine the sculpture and its mental space, and try to feel the time in the imaginary space. I repeat the procedure with the sculpture standing up to my left. If I manage to feel time in it, I combine this feeling with my impressions of the sculpture's form and mental space. This fusion of feelings is space-time, the essence of sculpture, parallel existence at multiple levels. Secondary stream of thoughts and feelings. With some paintings, I find the character of the virtual space and the feeling of time they convey to be pleasing. 
I like to walk my attention inside them. On the other side, there are paintings that I do not like. To me, they are unpleasant. I am not saying that they are not properly made. I just did not feel good about them. Placing my attention within the virtual space makes me feel uncomfortable. And yet, while my attention is within their space, I do not feel a need to change, rearrange, add or subtract anything. My attitude towards the sculpture is different. Sculptures awaken in me intentions, a desire for activity, they invite me to intervene. Some sculptures I'd like to cuddle with, some I'd like to push out of balance, some I'd like to inspect from the inside, some I'd like to weigh in my hand, etc. Some sculptures make me wish to continue working on them. With some sculptures, I would like to change their color or surface texture. Some ceramic sculptures I would like to try to bake at a higher temperature. For some sculptures I would like to find a more suitable place in the gallery, etc. This effect that sculptures have on me is further amplified in the case of mobile, dadaistic, and conceptual sculptures, installations and interventions in the environment. With some authors, it seems that their primary objective is not to create works of art but rather to provoke the viewers to develop certain intentions and then to force them to suppress these intentions. At an exhibition, one of the exhibits was a pile of bricks. I felt an urge to take these bricks one by one and throw them out of the window. I was disconcerted by this pile of bricks. It did not let me view properly the neighboring sculptures, which had been made with the intention of expressing something, showing some rhythmical patterns or orientation of forms. This untidy chicken made it difficult for me to define the space times of the nearby sculptures. As I have been taught that gallery visitors do not interfere with exhibits, that they do not throw bricks out of the window, I refrained myself from throwing them out. But it made me think, if artists are allowed full freedom of expression, maybe visitors should be given some freedom too. Another exhibition and another pile of bricks. However, those bricks were carefully selected and I was attracted by the beauty of their color. This neatly stacked pile definitely emanated a mental space around itself. These bricks did not bother me. Moreover, it felt good to look at them. At the third exhibition, there was a pile of sand, freshly heaped up. It made me laugh because I felt an urge to pee on the sand and make a hole in it. I kirked the urge, but this pile of damp sand kept nagging at me. I worried that it could ruin the gallery flooring if it stayed in the same place for long. As a rule, I am ready to devote more time to sculptures whose mental space I can feel and whose space time I can define. I take seriously the impulses they generate in me. I can establish an emotional contact with them. In other words, it is easy for me to decide whether I like them or maybe I do not like them. After that I can proceed to analyze their stylistic elements, may be able to decide whether the thoughts and messages they convey are intentional or chance, and may appreciate their aesthetics. The level of mastery employed in the making, and their usefulness if they are functional objects. The sensitivistic procedure warrants respect for the viewed work of art and a gradual and systematic approach to its study and understanding. It calms down the viewer and takes him, her for a visual adventure from which he, she comes up with feelings, observations and conclusions that would not be there if he, she hurried through the viewing procedure.